Hi all, uh, my name is Casey Babcock and I'll be giving you an overview of the September release this month. Uh, first we have the Fastmail email aliasing integration. So this is an addition to our forwarded email aliasing integrations. Um, essentially, you can, connect, can now connect a Fastmail account to the Bitwarden username generator to generate email aliases. And I'll do a quick demo of how to set this up now. I'll be navigating over to my Fastmail account. This is under settings, under password and security and I'm gonna create a new API token. I'm gonna to give this a name of something that I can refer back to later. So I'll just go Bitwarden email alias, and I'm gonna select masked email, and then generate API token. It's important to copy this API token to my clipboard and then select done. Now I'm gonna jump on over to a Bitwarden web vault under um, the username generator. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have forwarded email alias selected and Fastmail. I'm going to paste in my API access token and select generate username. Um, and that very interesting uh, username has been generated. I can copy that and now use it as a Fastmail email alias. The next update um, is the portal provider portal update. So the provider portal screen now has a quick summary of all client plans and seats. And you can see this, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see this in this demo screenshot. We have the plans on the right hand side and the number of users on the left. Great, so the next update is the Organization Vault Export event. So this feature is pretty self-explanatory, but essentially whenever an owner or admin exports the vault, that action will now be recorded in the organization's event logs. The next feature in this release is um, pre-configured URLs and the browser extension specifically for um, self-hosting. So for customers who are self-hosting, environment URLs for browser extensions and are now available for pre-configuration. So before the browser extension is deployed to users, server URLs can be pre-populated when logging into the Bitwarden account. So for visual reference, I'm gonna pop on over to my own Bitwarden extension go to settings. And so now all of these um, URL fields would not have to be filled in by an end user when they're logging in. Um, you can also find step-by-step -step instructions in this attached help article. Next, we have an update to the Bitwarden Authenticator on mobile. So this is primarily a UI update, but the start screen now has a verification code navigation. Um, you can click on that and then see all the vault items that have associated verification codes. Um, to see it in action, I have this helpful GIF, um, so you can see that navigation, and then all the verification codes which you can copy to your clipboard. Um, so essentially this makes it a lot easier to find and copy verification codes. This update has also improved the process for adding more TOTP codes or adding new TOTP codes. So scanning the QR code is now the default way to add a new TOTP code, although you can manually enter a secret as well. Lastly, we have the CLI serve origin protection. So this provides an extra layer of protection to the CLI serve function by blocking requests made by an origin header by default. So you can find more details on this in the attached help center article right here. Um, that's all for the September release. Again, my name is Casey Babcock and please reach out if you have any questions.